Hey everybody, welcome back to our little support group. I'm Nancy and we're here to support pet parents who have fur babies with seizures or epilepsy. If you're keeping count, this is like episode three because we're kind of going in order of what's been going on with my dog, Sadie, who is an English Springer Spaniel. She's 12 and a half years old and started having seizures when she was six and a half. As always, this is not meant in any way to replace getting any help from a professional veterinarian. I am not a veterinarian. I have no medical background. I just have a dog with seizures. So if you do think that your animal is having seizures or you suspect epilepsy, contact your vet immediately and follow their advice. So when we left off last time, um, it was about late October 2017 and um, we had been out at a wedding and a friend of mine had been staying with Sadie and taking care of her and things had been well that day while my friend was watching her and then about a half hour after we got home from the wedding she started having seizures. So like I said that was October 2017 so I'm going to pick up from there and I'm just going to read a little bit from my uh, seizure journal which I do recommend if your animal is having um, seizures often or even just once. Write it all down. Journal it. It helps the vets. It helps the neurologists. It helps the doctors find out what the heck is going on. So now we are into November of 2017. In early November, uh, November 3rd actually of 2017, we started Sadie on a secondary uh, anti-seizure medication. She had already been on phenobarbital. We had done a couple different strengths started with about 16 milligrams and then it went up to 62 milligrams and at present we're at 97.2. Um, but back then she was at 64 and that wasn't taking care of everything. So um, in beginning of November, we started her on an extended release Keppra, which is another human uh, seizure medication. We decided to go with the extended release because we would have to give her tablets every eight hours. Her dosages would be every eight hours of, of just regular ones. Because we both work and weren't here to give her those at the correct times, we opted to go with an extended release, which you give every 12 hours, and it slowly releases into the body as needed. We decided to go with that one just be, for scheduling. It was better for us. Um, so she started that on November 3rd, and then November 4th, the very next day, um, we had been out of the house from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. When we came home, there were some knickknacks that were knocked over. Shoes and boots were kind of strewn all over the house. Um, she had pooped in the hallway and there was poop all over the bathroom floor and on her hind legs. So we have no idea what happened, but it obviously was a seizure. We have, uh, so that was uh, November 4th that that seizure occurred. And then on November 19th, um, we, had, we had been doing really good. Um, we hadn't had any seizures that we had seen since October 14th. So that was... A couple days over a month and since we started her on the Keppra daily she wasn't having any seizures so um, she took her pheno and her Keppra at 5 45 p.m. so with her dinner and at approximately 6 21 p.m. Sadie and I were both napping on the couch I was almost asleep when I felt felt her start convulsing she was lying on her right side she started seizing and her mouth was open and foaming. She peed and her legs were moving, <clears throat> but they were slower than they had moved in the past. Usually it's like she's laying on her side and it's almost like she's running. Her legs are moving and pumping so fast. This time they were slower. The convulsions lasted less than one minute. She started coming out of it. Her body relaxed except for her front legs. About 30 seconds later, she started seizing again a bit more violently with her legs moving more rapidly. This lasted another minute or so. She came out of that and started relaxing, but we couldn't tell if she wasn't quite out of danger yet. At this point, her front legs were up on the couch, but her hind legs were on the floor 
and her tail was wagging. So we thought, okay, she's coming out of it. Um, we put her, we moved her down to the floor just for safety. And about 45 seconds later, she started again with her legs being very stiff and moving very quickly. This seizure again lasted approximately one minute. The whole episode from first convulsion to last was less than five minutes. She was breathing heavily, panting, and laid on the floor for a few moments. She got up, stumbled a bit, but eventually laid on her bed and was looking very confused and very lost. She kept her tail tucked when walking around for a bit, but eventually started acting more like herself. At the time that I wrote this entry, it had been 50 minutes from the initial seizure till the time I wrote the post. And she was very tired, but she was alert. So that was three very quick seizures in less than five minutes. Um, that's called a cluster of seizures. I eventually asked my, my uh, neurologist, her neurologist, about that. And he said, it is a cluster of seizures, but when they're that quick together, like within the five minutes like that, it's actually one seizure that just kind of stretched out and never really completed until she got all of it out of her system. So it can be a cluster. It can be... Um, one seizure. So that was November 19th. November 20th, the very next day, about 6 a.m., so less than 12 hours. The morning had been normal. She ate and took her meds. Then she went outside and pooped. I was taking my shower and she was doing her normal thing in my bathroom, which was walking around, licking the sink, and laying on the bath mat. I peeked out of the curtain and saw her lying on the mat right in front of the bathtub. I turned off the shower, opened the curtain, and she was seizing. Her mouth stretched open and her head shaking. So just like that, I had just looked and she was fine. A few seconds later, I looked again and she was seizing. And she was right next to the tub, so I was afraid she was going to hit her head. I put a towel under her head and moved her away from the bathtub. The convulsions lasted less than a minute. She stayed lying on the floor, but was still stiff. She went into another convulsion, which lasted less than a minute. She got up and stumbled into the hall. Just inside the dining room, she started seizing again, so I laid her on the floor. She pooped, and these convulsions lasted between one and two minutes. She got up and walked down the hall and into the family room. She went into her chair and leaned against it. I could see her starting to lose focus again, and her head started shaking. I tried to lie her down, but her body was so stiff, she, so stiff, she ended up standing straight up on her hind legs and leaning on me. I got her on the floor and she pooped again and convulsed very severely with her legs pumping very quickly. She was panting and grunting. The grunting was kind of new. She eventually rolled over and lifted her head. She started pacing and went behind another chair and tried to lean her head against it. She then went to the bathroom and stood in front of the bathtub. She looked up at me and I told her no, but then she jumped in the tub and started licking the drain. I turned on the faucet so she could drink, and she drank a lot. Then she just laid down in the tub and stretched out. I let her stay there for about five minutes, but I was worried she might have another seizure, and I didn't want her in the bathtub for that. Because I thought, there's no way. If she starts seizing in there, there's no way I'll be able to lift her out of the tub while she's convulsing. I picked her up and took her out of the tub, and I called um, her neurologist office and told them we were coming. Steve got home and we took her to the ER. She was very agitated in the car and would not calm down. Now we had to take her because they tell you if they have three seizures in less than 12 hours, that they need to be, you need to, we need to call the neurologist and they will then determine if she needs to come in and be given fluids because this takes so much out of them. The reason she drinks so much, she's on so much medication now, she drinks a lot of water. But at that time, that was like a nervous thing. And she was trying to cool herself off. And I don't even think she realized she drinks the water when she's coming out of them like that. But because she had had the, the three quick seizures the night before, within 12 hours, it was like 11 hours, um we had to take her in and we had to leave her there so they could observe her and give her the fluids if needed. Um, 
I did not look at the clock during the last seizure, but I'd estimated the whole thing from the first convulsion, convulsion and the bathroom outside my shower while I was showering to the final one in the family room was approximately 10 minutes, which is long. We saw the ER doctor and they kept her for 24 hour observation. She had no seizures while in their care. We picked her up on 1121 at 4 p.m. and the doctor increased her Keppra dosage to 1,000 milligrams twice a day. She had been on 500 milligrams twice a day, so now they're doubling it. Um, and because of the extended Sorry, she just made a noise. Because of the extended release, um, they're different milligrams and they have to figure it out differently. Um, so that all happened. We picked her up on 1121. On 1126, her neurologist called and after reviewing the recent seizure activity, increased her phenobarbital dose to one and a half pills of the 64 megs twice a day. Um, with, and that's including with the thousand milligrams of the Keppra. So now December 4th, these are, these are coming quick, October, November, December. So now it's December 4th, um, approximately 2.57 AM. Sadie's lying in bed with us and I felt her starting to convulse. This lasted maybe a minute. She peed and was foaming at the mouth. She stood up and wanted down off the bed. We put her on the floor and she started pacing the hallway. She went into the living room and pooped in the living room. She kept pacing the hallway. Within five minutes, she started going into another convulsion. This lasted less than a minute. She also, she kept pacing and now she was starting to bite at things, including my slippers and my pajamas. She had never done this before. She also grabbed onto my arm and my leg, biting hard. We have to remember, she doesn't know what she's doing. She has no clue what she's doing at this point. So she wasn't meaning to hurt me. She was scared and she was just grabbing at the first thing she could find. Um, about another five minutes later, she was in the hallway on the rug, on a long runner that we have in the hallway, and she went into another seizure. She pooped and was foaming at the mouth and was convulsing hard with her whole body slamming the floor and her legs pumping. I tried holding her and she tried standing in the middle of it. Then she fell again and started convulsing some more. This one lasted less than two minutes. She finally started drinking some water and seemed to start coming out of it. It was now 3.15 a.m., so about 17 minutes since the first one. She continued pacing and as of 4.20 a.m., she was still very anxious she wouldn't calm down. She was pacing around and, and was still in that post ictal phase that we talked about, but she would not sleep. She was just up. So that's 12-4 on 12-12. Per her doctor, we increased her pheno again. Um, she was now at one and a half tabs twice a day. And uh, we were waiting for her Keppra levels to come back if we could increase that. That's the other thing. We have, she has to have blood work every six months on her phenobarbital because these drugs can damage their organs, especially their livers. Same with people. So her phenobarbital levels get checked every six months. And once a year, they check all the other levels for all the other drugs that she's on. So we had to wait for the levels to come back from the Keppra to make sure that there was no damage being done to her organs before we could increase anything again. So that was 12-12 that we increased that. On 12-24, Christmas Eve, we left the house for a Christmas Eve family holiday gathering. We left at 6 p.m. and returned at approximately 9.45 p.m. Steve had dropped me off at church, so he returned to find her doing her usual happy-to-see-you trot but much slower than usual. He immediately noticed some Christmas decorations were disrupted. He went down to the hall of the bathroom and there was poop all over the bathroom and on her. He guessed she had jumped into the tub because some bottles, shampoo bottles and stuff in the bathtub were knocked over. She had also peed on the couch. We have no idea when this started or how long it, how long it lasted or any of the details. He cleaned up the bathroom and gave her a bath. 
when he came to pick me up from church around 1045, she was very subdued and lying on the chair. Um, at the time I wrote that entry at 1135, she was sleeping but still kind of out of it. And we noticed um, as she was falling asleep, her eyes were rolling back in her head a little further than usual. So this is the point where we started realizing that we can't leave her at home for hours without someone checking on her or we have to start taking her places with us. So that was Christmas Eve. So then on Christmas Day, 1225, 2017, uh, we were at a Christmas celebration and Sadie was staying with my sister for a few hours. We went to, um, we dropped her off at my sister's house and then we went to my husband's family for dinner. Um, at approximately 6.51, she was sleeping at my sister's house and started convulsing and my sister stayed with her until she stopped thrashing. My sister, my sister who is a medical professional, uh, did categorize it as thrashing. Um, and my sister went to get her a medication called midazolam, which the neurologist had given us. I will talk about that again in a minute. Um, Sadie peed and must have bitten her tongue or lip because there was a small amount of blood on the floor. My sister administered the midazolam and Sadie started to relax. We got to my sister's house at this point. She was trembling and trying to stand. Sadie was trembling, and when she tried to stand, she was stumbling. She was pacing and being in an unfamiliar surrounding. She's, you know, she knows my sister's house, but not like her own and not when she's out of it like this. She was confused and didn't really know where to go or what to do to um, get some comfort. She had her tail tucked, but finally started coming out of it and eventually had her tail wagging. The whole episode was about 12 to 14 minutes from the seizure to her being back to herself. Now the midazolam, that is also a human medication. And because she was having so many of these seizures so quickly, the neurologist had us start using this midazolam, which is a liquid. And what we would have to do was when she was coming out of a seizure, you would put some into a syringe. You took the needle off of a syringe and you pulled the medicine into the syringe and you would have to shoot it into each of her nostrils. And it like immediately calms them down. I'm not quite sure what it does. It's like a, I don't want to say anesthetic cause it's not an anesthetic. Um, but it's a relaxant. I guess I could say, and it immediately calms them down and almost prevents another one from coming on. And we were told it was very safe and we could use it as much as needed. About a year into using this with each seizure, the neurologist said, oh no, no, you shouldn't be using it that much. So eventually we stopped altogether, but for a while that was our go-to while she was seizing, while she was convulsing, um, and coming out of it, we would administer this midazolam and it would instantly stop the seizing and calm things down. Um, and like I said, as my sister, as being a, a medical professional, she was comfortable doing that, but it's still very unsettling. Um, and the neurologist at this point had suggested um, CBD capsules. He said it's something we could look into. It was the, the company that he suggested to us was very closely followed by, I believe it was University of Arizona. Um, and he said he had no problem with us trying this to see if it helped, uh, which we did. We um, ordered them from the company he suggested use them for a little while. They really didn't do anything. And we thought it's just one more thing for her to be on. So we took her off. We did eventually try hemp oil, which, which we did get, you know, the neurologist did say, yes, we could try that. He had no problem with that, but he, um, he did say it could cause the phenobarbital not to work as well as it should. 
like they could interact. So once he told us that, we quit the hemp oil too. So that brings us through to January of 2018. So we're going to stop there. And I want to, you know, make these videos way too long and, and, and I don't want to say boring, but I don't want to bore you guys with all the details so much. We did start noticing these seizures started happening around holidays. They started happening, you know, Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July, Christmas. We started noticing this. And we also started noticing um, they started happening around full moons, uh, blood moons, harvest moons, every time there was a lunar cycle. And I talked to her neurologist about that, and he said, some people truly believed that these seizures in people and animals follow a lunar cycle. So I pulled out a lunar can calendar and I went through the seizure journal and I tr tried to make a matchup. Sometimes they fell right on the correct day and other times it was really stretching like that was four days this way or four days that way, three days. So I don't think hers goes by the lunar cycle, but um, that is something else that you could look into if, if you so desire. So well, like I said, we're going to stop here. We made it up to 2018. We're getting there, but um, I think that's enough for now. So thank you for stopping by this channel. Please remember to subscribe down below if you want to be a part of this support group. If you want to leave any comments, if you want to leave any questions, I'll try and answer. Or if you would have any advice, if you are a pet parent that has experienced this and you want to leave your own experiences down below, that's great too. I welcome all of it. So thank you again for stopping by the channel. I hope you subscribe and we'll see you next time. Go give your pet a smooch, go give them a hug, and love on them like crazy. So if you're like me and you don't have kids, that's your baby. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.